despite decades-long efforts of a whole agile community through books, articles, presentations, videos, we are still confronted in agile organizations with output metric-driven reporting systems and at the heart of these reporting systems, still stuck in the industrial age where management Leaders believe that they should protect the organization from slacking workers, lazy workers. At the heart, at the core of all of this is a metric called velocity. Now, don't get me wrong. In the hands of an experienced agile team, velocity, this internal to the team metric, can be extremely useful to predict future splits, release dates, and at the end, maximize value. But when used by managers who have a wrong interpretation of commitment, it becomes a tool for oppression. You start hearing things like, why was our velocity this sprint lower than the last sprint? Please, right now, provide a solid explanation. Our velocity has stopped increasing. Maybe it's time to hire a new scrum master. What's the point in having a scrum master if it can't increase our velocity? We didn't complete all stories in our sprint. Can we right now get a guarantee we'll complete them all next time? We need to understand the general thinking here. Developers are an expensive resource. Yeah, not people. They're not people. Resource, an expensive resource. Managers treat them like that. And because they are an expensive resource, we need to squeeze every last drop out of them. And velocity is perfect for that. The higher the velocity, the more efficient the team is. The more they are working, the less they are slacking, the less they can be lazy. It guarantees that we are squeezing every last drop out of them. The higher the velocity, the more output, the more customers are satisfied, right? Well, not exactly, but more on this later. Let's quickly read one comment that I got from one of my viewers from you, Rajesh. At work, my management tracks team velocity as a performance objective. My team has recently started working on new complex and critical work, but team velocity has gone down from what it was before. As it is a critical piece of work, management has provided three more people in the last sprint, but still, velocity has not improved. On the worst side, it has gone down. I have my annual performance review tomorrow, and I'm afraid it's not going to be good. What should I do? Sorry to mention that, Rajesh, it's definitely not going to be good. If a team is being measured on a metric, on the ability to increase a metric like velocity, they're going to have a hard time. Velocity is basically how fast a team is going. And the funny part is that three additional members were added to the team. And even though the members were added, velocity did not increase simply because when team dynamics change, velocity crashes. When new people join a team, they need to learn how the team works. Some people need to stop working on user stories, actual work, and train these newcomers. Help them integrate collaborate with the team. It takes time. And it makes sense that the team would slow down in the short term. Might increase in the long run, but we never know. As a Scrum Master, in this situation, I would first explain to management what velocity is, how to use it correctly, why adding three additional people in the team is slowing down the team, and come up with solutions on how to meet this unrealistic deadline. One of them might be to reduce the scope. I'll give you a more detailed answer to your question later on. But first, let's define velocity. Velocity in simple terms is the amount of work an agile team, a scrum team, can deliver in a sprint. When we talk about velocity, we usually talk about the average velocity. Let's say a team, every single sprint, they deliver 100 story points. The velocity for each sprint is 100. So the average velocity of a team is 100. And when calculating the average velocity, we usually go back three sprints. So the total of these three sprints for this team is 300 points divided by three. That's 100 points. Simple example. There's two main misconceptions that results in the misuse of velocity, usually by our leaders. Management. First, output equals value. Very important when you understand that the general mindset here is that we want to please the customer. And developers are a scarce resource, expensive. So they shouldn't be lazy, slacking. They should be efficient. 
They should be effective. We are here to use the developers to maximize value. And the best way to do that is to use Velocity to track their progress. Are they working efficiently? If they were working efficiently, their Velocity would be increasing every single sprint. But the problem here is the big assumption is that output equals value. Most people in management, the leaders, believe that meeting unrealistic deadlines, delivery dates, value, releasing fast, faster, always delivery, 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 that's value. Developers working around the clock 24 seven, that's value. That's efficiency maybe, yeah. I give you that, efficiency, but not effectiveness. There's a big difference. Efficiency is doing something right, improving, doing something perfectly. Effectiveness is doing the right things. You can be extremely efficient, <laughs> doing something extremely well, but the something was never the right thing. That's the missing link. Output, delivery, 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 without even focusing on what the customer wants. Going into multiple directions, never validating if a customer loves our product or not. Not making research prior to starting the development. Assuming what the customer wants without asking them. That's the typical mindset of someone who believes output equals value. A simple example is this video. I usually spend roughly four hours filming a video. You don't care about that. I can spend 10 hours recording a video. I believe it's the perfect video and it can only get 100 views. I can spend two hours recording a video and this video would get 10,000 views. The viewer doesn't care if I spent two hours, 10 hours, 20 hours working on a video. The viewer only cares about the output. Does the output meet their expectation? Are they amazed? It doesn't matter if I spend two hours, 10 hours, only the output counts. And same for the customer. The customer doesn't care how much time you spend developing something. They only care about how good is the product, how good the product is meeting or service is meeting their expectation. And to get this part right, <laughs> you need to first start by asking them, doing all the discovery, doing all the research, building hypotheses, surveys, asking them, developing based on that, releasing early, small increments, asking for feedback, improving on that. But all these are ignored by people who want to deliver, 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 constant output. Why do we even need to release every sprint? Let's release everything in one go. <gasps> Big bang, release approach, waterfall model, management, love that. And when you understand this mindset, it makes total sense for someone with this mindset to focus on velocity because that's exactly what they need. They need to see that people are working faster every single sprint, more efficiently every single sprint because for them, efficiency output, the more we deliver, the more we read the deadlines, that's value. By trying to squeeze every last drop out of your developers, you are preventing them from thinking, reflecting, improving, innovating. Yes, they are delivering value. Yes, we are focused on output, but in the long run, your company will pay for that. When other companies are building based on innovative ideas, being creative because they have time to do that, you will lose because you are so focused on output, output, ignoring the customer. The second misconception is the commitment of a sprint. Many people believe that during a sprint, the team is committing on all user stories. <laughs> so we are basically committing on delivering the sprint backlog. We are picking in the sprint planning a list of user stories. A target velocity, how many points do we believe we can complete? How many user stories do we believe we can complete? And at the end of a sprint planning, we are making a commitment. We will complete this certain amount of points. We will complete this certain amount of user stories and we are signing it with blood. <laughs> That's our commitment. As per the Scrum Guide 2020, developers who are owners of a sprint backlog commit to achieving only a single thing every sprint. A sprint goal. What does that mean? A sprint goal. The number one, the most prioritized thing in the sprint. Meeting the sprint goal. 
and the sprint goal shouldn't be to complete everything in the sprint. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. A simple definition of a sprint goal is the one thing that you need to complete in the sprint to consider the sprint a success. And it can't be everything in the sprint backlog. <laughs> the sprint backlog needs to be able to change, be flexible. That's what agility is all about, welcoming change. As long as we don't put at risk our ability to complete the sprint goal, the sprint backlog, everything can change. User stories can change. And because everything can change, how can you commit on something that you know will change? Now, you commit on the sprint goal. That's what agility is all about. And for velocity, exact same thing. You can't commit on the velocity. A certain amount of points every single sprint because you don't know what will happen in the sprint. You can be extremely good at estimating your work, but it's still a guess, <laughs> a prediction. People in management, our leaders believe when we are estimating something, when we are planning something in a complex development environment, we are really saying that this thing will be delivered at this date. We'll complete this amount of user stories per day or in the sprint, <laughs> it's only a guess. We can't predict the future, no one can. But management, leaders believe that we have some sort of superpower that can make us predict the future. Unfortunately, we don't. And because of that, there's no way of telling the team to commit on velocity, <laughs> something that they can't predict. There's no way of forcing the team to commit on completing the sprint backlog because we already know that the sprint backlog will change. We are agile. If you want more details on how to write the perfect sprint goal, watch this video right here. But all these things, all these misconceptions, do they feel waterfall-ish to you? They are. And management leaders love it. Our obsession with meeting our commitments, meeting our delivery dates, estimations, planning, increasing our velocity every single sprint. Waterfall. Our priority here is a plan. Ignoring changes, ignoring the customer, but following a plan which goes against agility. So change or try changing the mindset of your leaders. Their focus shouldn't be deliver always faster, faster, faster. No. Their focus should be, how are we maximizing value? Are we maximizing value? How do we know we are maximizing value? Every single day, this is what they should be asking the team. Complete shift from waterfall, faster delivery, to real agility. If you want more tips, insights on Agile Scrum personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.